Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the Tech Geek webinar. Thank you for joining the session today. The topic of today's talk is Ethereum blockchain continued. It will be a one hour session with around 40 to 45 minutes for the presentation and the remaining time for the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please send them to us using the questions tab on the GoToWebinar control panel. I am Nishant, the moderator of this session, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our guest speaker, Mr. Rangarajan Kotadi, Rajan Founder CEO, Blockchain Innovation Lab. Rajan is a serial entrepreneur and founder of Blockchain Innovation Lab, ex co founder of CaniCart, Internet of Things Marketplace for Solution and Products, USD Global INC, based out of USA and India. CaniCart was the first Internet of Things Marketplace for Solutions and Products. Prior to venturing into startups, Rajan worked in large corporates like Hevlet Packard, Digital Equipment Corporation, HCL Technologies, and Texas Instruments, managing diversified management roles in different IT verticals. So, without any further delay, let me introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Rajan. Thanks, Vivian. So, good evening, all. So, I think uh, today we will be discussing more with respect to fundamentals of blockchain. First, we'll have a recap of the fundamentals of blockchain because this is a continued session of what we had in the previous sessions. So I think just to have all the people on the same page, uh, we'll just go through a 10 minutes short uh, presentation on the fundamentals of blockchain before we get into the Ethereum blockchain and what are the different kind of protocols used and why we need to go with the Ethereum blockchain and how it is different from other blockchains. All right, as you all know, right, so uh, we have different kind of uh, computing system in place uh, and there's a lot of evolution which happened from a World Wide Web uh, to, you know, peer-to-peer uh, -peer network which you have seen. So I think Napster was the first uh, which has implemented this and BitTorrent also works on the IPFS protocol which is peer-to-peer -peer again. So from the concepts of it, there's a guy called Satoshi Nakamoto who has uh, you know, who has identified this and has written a white paper on Bitcoin, on Bitcoin. So how exactly it functions. So the underlying technology of the Bitcoin is a blockchain, right? You just can Google it, uh, 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 Bitcoin white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto, and you just can go through it to have a better understanding about the evolution of blockchain from there, how different blockchains has come across, right? So as we all know, World Wide Web, it's a bigger revolution. We have seen that uh, a series of uh, disruptive companies coming out of that revolution. And now there is the same kind of revolution which is happening now. So uh, it was in the internet revolution was completely focused towards centralized computing. Now it is completely moving into decentralized computing, which is completely immutable. There is so much of trust and transparency involved in this system. So there are different business models coming out of uh, this system and we can see uh, great companies coming out of this uh, with this uh, new technologies coming up. So bit, what is a Bitcoin? It is a digital currency and it's not a physical that is it's not printed like euros or something where it is a computer based software kind of a thing where it works on a private public key pair. So anyone can transfer the coins directly to your friends or families directly using the public private key pair like if you know the public key it's like sending out an email to someone so you also need to have a, a public key above public key of them to send out any kind of currencies to them right so coin has int and owner so each of this coin has an int owner and owners can spend the coin so it's just that you don't have any option of double spending kind of a thing here uh, there is so much of trust and transparency involved in that so nodes will themselves will manage to see that how the transaction happens. So you have community controls. It is not uh, the government's, and it is based on algorithms and mathematics. So and protocols and rules. So your complete blockchain networks is based on the algos and different kind of protocols, for, uh, which are coming out for different blockchains. And there is different set of rules which is being setting for that. Right, Bitcoin network is completely public, so that's that's a disruption which is happening now. So with respect to anyone can start building their own application on top of a, 
a blockchain based platform so you just can you know uh, empower the people to uh, have uh, um, to create different kind of applications for different verticals the source code is completely open source if you go to github you can find the complete source code of different projects but however there are different like uh, blockchains like hyperledger which is been uh, yeah, innovated by ibm so probably you can go and type in in google and and you will have uh, an option to go and change their code and contribute to their platform right so it's completely open source and owners uses private key to spend the bitcoins public ledger it is all bitcoin exchanges are visible to everyone on the network so it's all completely open so anyone can see anyone who is holding how many coins and all every anyone can see but however if you want to get into a, a build an application for your enterprise so probably you can go with a private blockchain or a consortium blockchain if you want to have multiple uh, companies coming onto a platform and say that we will share the data between ourselves so probably at that point of time people can go for a consortium blockchain otherwise for a normal enterprise based blockchain wherein uh wherein you don't want to share your data and you want to sh- keep your data confidential you need to go for a private blockchain you need to create and this is a public blockchain ethereum so anyone can go and use this platform and create a, a, a their own blockchain as well and also if you can see there are let us several cryptocurrencies coming into the market today which are hosting the ico so all this is done on the ethereum platform so uh, tr- there is a there's also a transfer and the speeding of coins required for little fees so whenever there is uh, some trend of transaction you also need to incentivize the people who are putting the transaction on the blockchain so those people are sitting across and doing a mining spending lot of energy uh, in terms of electricity and all putting all the mining rigs to mine the blockchain of uh, bitcoins or any kind of cryptocurrencies so these guys will take some fee from you and just they just put the Uh, commit the transactions on the blockchain but how would this only applicable for a public blockchain for a private blockchain all these are pre mined you need not give any kind of fees for that transactions are validated by miners and who get rewarded and so this is just a pseudo name satoshi nakamoto till till today nobody knows about who has done all this right it somebody has created a program and they have put this name so he has become famous so blockchain innovation journey if you see uh first initially bitcoin just started okay people were not so familiar with it so it does not have any value from the time it has created uh and uh, 3 4 years from the time it was created nobody was interested slowly the uh, uh, early adopters has implemented a lot on the bitcoin blockchain and they have created other cryptocurrencies to see that uh, to see that how this uh, platform is will create lot of value it's like you know you have uh, through a hard fork uh, bitcoin has uh, another bitcoin cash so bitcoin gold bitcoin uranium there are other coins coming out of this so but however any kind of updates which happens on the bitcoin network that is called forking there are two kinds of forking one is a software fork and one is a hardware fork right soft fork uh, a hard fork is something you make any changes on the hardware right so so probably whenever you do that you also need to incentivize the same kind of uh, currency say when uh, uh, through a bitcoin uh, bitcoin cash got evolved so everyone holding a bitcoin was getting one bitcoin cash free of cost so that's uh, so today the bitcoin cash is around almost uh, a lakh more than a lakh rupee right and it's no it's not just not the currency so we should be thinking about and looking from the technology standpoint what exactly is blockchain and why exactly we can use it and which verticals we really can use it initially uh, the founder of ethereum thought of writing a smart contract scripting on top of a bitcoin but however any kind of changes is need to happen on the bitcoin network can it to have a consensus from 51% peop- of the people on the network that means 51% of the people who are owning it need to agree that the guy need to can go and modify it 
So he, he did not get the approval for that. Then he started to create his own blockchain platform that is called an Ethereum platform, wherein you can enable smart contracts. A smart contract is something where uh, between multiple parties or between the same party, you will have some kind of contracts uh, which is written on top of the blockchain. So there is so much of trust and transparency built. So there it's completely automated. You will not see mostly in the financial sector and uh, land records and supply chain management. You can use uh, this uh, blockchain platforms uh, to create your own distributed applications on top of it. And uh, you can write the smart contracts and then uh, you can start using it. So efficiency and scaling. So there is currently some problem with respect to efficiency of a blockchain platform. So Bitcoin blockchain, Bitcoin has only seven to eight transactions per second. But however, in real time, if you really want to take that kind of technology to a real world, it is ideally not possible. So you need to have a larger transactions onto the blockchain to uh, make this uh, you know technology successful. So then Ethereum also has few, but they are coming out with a different forking. And I think by the summer of uh, 2018, they are coming out with a exciting technology. They are trying to increase the transaction speed and also trying to change the way the protocol works from a proof of work to proof of stake. That we will be discussing in the next uh, slides. So blockchain is a decentralized system for exchange of value. So it uses a shared distributed ledger. So it's like a distributed ledger can be shared across so that there won't be any kind of uh, fraudulent transaction which happens. Unlike the frauds which we see today in the banking verticals, right, wherein uh, somebody is bypassing the core banking system and moving and, uh, you know, uh, going with uh, some kind of swift system which is not connected. So had this been put on the blockchain, so we will not be seeing all this kind of frauds coming in. Okay? Because the transaction commit instantaneously. It's not that it does not depend on a person to really update it. So blockchain itself will go and do that. And transaction immutability achieved by way of blocks and chaining. Right? So in simple terms, a chain of blocks like so it keeps forming like a chain that is called a blockchain. The, the, why it got a name called a blockchain, right? So it forms a chain, but blocks are built as the number of transaction increases, the blocks also keeps on increasing. And it leverages consensus mechanism. There is a different kinds of consensus mechanism which we would be discussing in the next slides. So it's very interesting thing to learn. It uses cryptography for trust trans accountability, security. All the data which has been transferred across is through a cryptography algorithm. So cryptography, as you know, it's very secure, robust, and uh, because the, the data is completely decentralized, you have uh, data replication happens on the different nodes, so probably nobody can hack into the system. So it's better than a normalized, uh, normal, uh, uh, central computing where s somebody goes and attack your servers so probably that uh, that is not there still there are problems here as well but however it is not up to the extent of you just go and attack someone and you can just down the network so even though you have attacked one node there are other other places where the data gets replicated and that will be keep working right so coming to here so its value uh, maybe or maybe exchange for say this is one example of a a, a car use case plus a um, land use case so both you can use uh, a blockchain platform so how exactly it happens once the car owner registers and he transfers the ownership and once he transfers the ownership all these data say that on the one which you have on the on the right hand side is a ledger where all the details of the history of this particular car from the time it moved from the manufacturing facility to the dealer to the owner to the first owner to the second owner every other thing will be completely tracked so I think you know with that people can take an informed decision in terms of how they really can use that assert right how the assert transfer happens uh, say an example of you have a supply chain where uh, you can track uh, uh, where you are uh, 
getting your medicines from, right? So anti-counterfeiting measures kind of a thing, right? So probably you'll be much more happy saying that, okay, whatever you are consuming is genuine, right? So ideally Walmart is developing a you know, blockchain platform in collaboration with IBM uh, for their complete supply chain vertical. So I think <coughs> blockchain as a technology is moving very, very fast compared to any other technology till date. So it's a traditional ledger and a distribution ledger. So as I already talked about, a traditional ledger, you have a ledger, you have a bank, but however, it's all communication is not seamless. It's all broken communication where you will have different channels of communication. Each channel does not communicate with other channel. So there is definitely a, a drawback in terms of, you know, managing things effectively. Right, when a distributed ledger, so it's a, you have a complete ledger here, so you have a data can be replicated across to different nodes okay uh, with uh, different kind of blockchains you have either it is a private or public or a, a consortium blockchain the blockchain terminology stands to be different but however the way it functions is one and the same so, so if you want to secure your data and say that i don't want my blockchain data to be given to the outside world you need to go for a private blockchain or if multiple banks come together and say that it's all we need to have the data and I don't want to share this particular data to anyone else then you will have consortium blockchain and if you want to go for a crowdsourcing kind of a, a technology where you want to reward the system say you want to fly in airlines and you want to get a reward through a crypto so probably people will start building those kind of applications on top of the ethereum blockchain which is a public blockchain So moving on, it's a distributed ledger here. So you have uh, different institutions here. All the reconciliation, intermediary process is happening here. So everybody knows about institution A knows about what institution C is doing, what institution B is doing. So, so there won't be any kind of fudging which happens of lack of communication. So communication is so seamless that if you want to transfer any currency from one location to other, so today it, is, it takes almost three days, four days for an interna international remittances to happen, right? So with the blockchain, so probably it happens in a fraction of seconds. So the moment you just transfer it, it's done. So the system gets updated instantaneously and nobody can fool around the system. <coughs> so blockchain, it's a chaining across. So here, if you see here, so you have uh, uh, the, the transaction hash table which you have here. So each of these particular blocks has timestamp when this particular transaction happened. You have an index that starts from zero for that particular block. You have a hash block. You have a previous hash. So each of these particular, say you are getting, uh, ideally your transaction goes in the reverse chronological order where you have this particular thing which gets referred to the previous one and this refers to the previous one. This particular transaction refers to the previous one, right? So you have the different blocks. Different blocks communicate with that. So each of the block has a timestamp. Each one knows that which one has put before it, right? You will have the transaction has details. You have the previous transaction has details. And you have the timestamp details. Distributed ledger equal to distributed database. So you can say it is a distributed database as well. So ideally, what is a blockchain? It's a database. But however, it's a distributed across, right? So that's the key difference between it. You have different kind of protocols where we would be discussing when we are uh, moving on to the other slides of Ethereum. So you have, just to make a note, you have proof of work, proof of stake, tendermint. Tendermint is not widely being used, but however, only two protocols which you need to really care about is proof of work and proof of stake, right? It ensures all the peer in the network is exactly the same copy of the ledger. Consensus is nothing but a protocol by which peers agree on state of the ledger. <clears throat> so any kind of thing which happens on the blockchain network need to have a consensus. So multiple parties need to agree to that. So in a proof of work, somebody need to validate your work. The guy who would be validating your work are called the miners and they would be validating your work and putting the transactions on the blockchain if it is not fake. If it is fake, so probably, you know, it will not allow you to put across. Right. Proof of stake <clears throat> is something node-to-node -node communication happens. You don't need to have any kind of, you know, uh, guy who need 
to you know you need not incentivize for that so probably note to note communication will happen so i think currently the ethereum blockchain is used on proof of work and it is moving on to the proof of stake very soon it guarantees to record transaction in chronological order so here if you see participants have a public private key pair as i told you so private key should not be given to anyone private key is for yourself you need to safeguard it either you need to print out on a paper and keep it in the safe or you have a different kind of uh, uh, wallets which you are getting the hard wallet where you can find on amazon ledger nano is one and uh, you have trezor so these are the hard way wallets where you can purchase and keep your private key safe in that if you have any kind of cryptocurrencies if you own so not just bitcoin there are 1000 different other coins which you have you can store all that each of this hardware device will support a uh, few top coins top 10 coins they will but however eventually as the ecosystem is developing so probably they are adding more coins so anyone can validate the transaction with owner's public key so i think it's like an email address so you just can say that uh, you have your friend's email address you just can send out an email to your friend so once <coughs> it's it's a terminology remains to be the same here so you have permissionless public blockchain network like bitcoin so you have dif two different kind again in a public blockchain it's a permission and permissionless blockchain you have distributed data storage distributed data storage plus computing here and uh, if you see here this is uh, these are the things which you need to make a note of please make a note of this value token uh, bitcoin uh, block time it takes around 10 minutes uh, to mine one particular block right block size is 1 mb and scripting it does not support scripting and uh, ethereum it is the uh, token name is eth and the block time takes around 14 seconds see the kind of difference which happens uh, uh, technological difference here it takes 10 minutes almost it has come down to 14 seconds now right so th when the time reduces the overall speed of that execution will be much more faster so it depends ideally it is around just 2 kb from 1 mb it is coming down to 2 kb and for scripting it is smart contracts right <clears throat> smart contract is nothing but it's it's like any other programming uh, thing which you do it's a computer code written in multiple languages ideally people who are good and familiar with uh, java programming will be easy for them to learn solidity programming solidity and go ethereum is what you need to learn to be a blockchain developer right contract lives on the network it enforces the rules and it performs negotiated actions <clears throat> so if you see here how the or uh, these two people the buyer and the seller are transacting the ethers right so the ethers is nothing but a, a coin of the ethereum so how does it work so wallet for migrating the ethers so you have an uh, you can type on the browser etherwallet.org etherwallet.org is the online uh, this one all a online wallet where without much effort you just can go and type in the browser and just you can type in your password but however you should not forget your password and you can start uh start getting the coins so there are a lot of air drops which is happening today and so probably you can subscribe to different tokens on the telegram group and probably they will just start putting some coins uh, in your uh, uh, wallet address whatever you give so or else today there is a lot of icos which are happening across so probably if you want to transfer some of the ethers so ideally you need to know about going to etherwallet.org then from there you need to transfer to the uh, address which they specified to go with so if you want to invest something in the early stage blockchain startups so that is the place you just need to have this kind of setup already before you go on right <laughs> all right this is about just the fundamentals of uh, blockchain and we will just move moving to the ethereum platform so this is our agenda for today so we'll go with open source public blockchain i think some of them we have discussed we'll go and discuss in detail here so what is an ether supply and what is an evm we'll discuss about gas and gas calculation how it does and consensus protocol what is a proof of work and proof of stake and we'll have ethereum network types what is the wallet architecture and all all <coughs> So Ethereum is a open source public blockchain network 
and the value token is Ether and it's completely decentralized Turing complete virtual machine or you can also say as EVM Ethereum virtual machine. So on the Ethereum you can create your own smart contracts. Smart contracts can be a multi-signature smart contract or a single normal smart contract. A multi-signature smart contract is something where uh, you have an agreement with multiple party like contracts or any kind of say you have started a company with a couple of partners so uh, you have defined some rules between both of you so probably you can write a smart contract for that and say that whenever I'm going to spend some specific amount of money right, the other person need to approve it right so there is so much of trust and transparency we have to, everything is put on the blockchain so <coughs> So even though any kind of data which gets deleted, once the data is created, you have a transaction has generated and nobody can do anything out. So even the administra administrator does not have power to really, you know, completely remove the data. Even though he removes the data, but still it says uh, the transaction hash will be showing. So that is the beauty of it. So going forward, you will have wherever there is a trust and transparency needed, lag for like, you know, vehicle registration, land registration, taxing, uh, you have multiple contracts kind of a thing, medical records and there are several other use cases, uh, educational records, uh, document, EKYC kind of thing, so probably all these are the best use cases for a blockchain, right. So and execution requires payment of a gas. So what is a gas? A gas is nothing but a unit of measurement of that particular currency where uh, say that uh, you're going to transfer uh, one Bitcoin from one particular wallet to other wallet. Ideally, you need to go and specify that has, if that is been in the exchange, so probably exchange will say that for having your transaction to go with, you need to spend around $10. Because uh, ideally today, the Bitcoin value is around $10,000. So you need to spend around, if you're fortunate, you'll get for $10. I see there are people who are spending around twenty, thirty dollars. So I think the more the people spend, <coughs> the transactions will be kept or kept on the blockchain based on the incentivizing structure. Say you are going to give ten dollars to the guy who is putting your transaction, your transactions will be put on the blockchain first before anyone else. Say you don't uh, give any kind of fee. Say that I just don't want to spend that much money, but. However, the dangerous thing is nobody will pick up your transaction if you don't incentivize it properly. Your transaction will still be lying for days together. There were situations like that. So we just need to be cautious in terms of incentivizing the community uh, before we you know, uh, use the platform. So there is different kind of measurements in terms of ethers. So the lowest measurement here, if you see, it starts from V, V, me, and V. Micro ether you have milli ether and ether. So one V is the low is the lowest unit of measurement. So this is very important thing. Whenever you want to calculate your token to ether, so probably you need to calculate in V W E I. So ether ether supply. So for any kind of cryptocurrencies or any kind of coins uh, which come. Uh, after the sale of in the ICO, so pre initial coin offering, it's like an ICO kind of a thing where people will start investing and it goes to the crypto exchanges and you can start trading uh, like same like a stock trading. But uh, this is a different, there's a token trading. Right when Ether started, so it was in 2014, the total supply they have put is around 60 million supply. So when you, whenever you go for a crypto, you need to identify about what is the total supply, what is the available supply, and how are you going to distribute it, and what is the process of burning this particular uh, crypto which is still uh, not being completely used. So all these mechanisms need to be put across in place before you decide on to go for a ICO, right? So pre-sale of Ethereum started in 2014. <coughs> there are three, uh, three different processes. One is pre-sale where people who you know particularly or the large institutional investors, they will be coming and investing in the pre-sales process. And next comes the pre-ICO process where uh, you have a general public who would be investing because 
and uh, the guys who are investing early you want a reward with around some discount of around 20 to 30 percent so then the next stage is free ico then there is an ico stage where public comes but because now that they understand about what you do and all the the incentivizing will not be that much so probably they will give around 10 percent so in the pre-sales it was 50 percent and it is pre-ico it was around 30 percent and ico it was around 10 percent then it goes to the exchange and it trades normally so if you are creating a value or uh, it goes high and if it is a pure speculation on the first day everybody will dump the coin and go away <clears throat> 12 minutes ideally most of the mining happens in china vietnam philippines uh, you have south korea north korea these are the asian regions where you see a lot of mining activity so <clears throat> there are large companies like Ether Miner and uh, you know other companies who do you know a lot of mining and they provide a cloud infrastructure for mining so probably you can use their cloud infrastructure and you can purchase a hash power and then you can also start mining but we do not need not purchase any equipment because the infrastructure is ready you have the cloud setup which is ready they are just giving you the interface you just need to uh, take the hash power and say that which one you want to go for right sometimes two to ethers for non winning miners so this is called uncle rewards so what do you mean by this uncle rewards uh, uncle rewards is something that when two people one of the, when a miner is working on one transaction and the same transaction has been picked up by the other miner in other part of the world so probably this guy don't know that this guy is working on this particular transaction he picks up but how uh, uh, the network will identify and reward the person who puts the transaction first on the blockchain and um, <clears throat> you know so for and but how would the second guy also put a lot of efforts so that is called an uncle reward so we be incentivize something because he also puts that kind of work right so we so we'll incentivize accordingly so contract notification user pays by ethers and incentivize for the miners so you have EVM so what is an EVM follows the EVM specification it is an ethereum protocol and it runs as a process on a computer or a server and it's a, it's a stack I'm talking about uh, the uh, the arc behind it that like you have a memory area EVM has a ethereum virtual machine has a memory area you have different stacks you have an execution engine it's like a normal I think people who are uh, understand the programming so probably the executing the structure of this uh, will be almost same right the EVM implemented in multiple languages so ideally there are some other platforms like Hashgraph and Cardano and other wherein it uses a native Java code where Java scripts can be used to build it so ideally in the future so probably you need not really bother about to learn Solidity and uh, get so directly if you understand the Java script so probably you can be a blockchain developer right so it will be a new normal so today is, there is a lot of hype around so probably everything will subside in the next 12 to 18 months <clears throat> so I think ecosystem will also develop so it's the right time for us to get into because there will be a great set of very exciting companies coming out and there will also be a lot of companies which will fail as well around 90 percent I can say which is going to fail but how are the the few guys who really want to build a clear business so probably those people will you can see a, a great uh, companies like steam and power ledger these are so few of the companies which i know who are doing really good <clears throat> so that we'll discuss about what they do and all in the next slides so gas is nothing but user invoking the transaction phase for the execution and as i told you we need to pay the gas price <clears throat> so where exactly you go and configure so you go and configure all this in a file called Genesis file. Genesis is the first block in a blockchain. So you just need to uh, underline that, uh, recap those. Genesis is the first block in a blockchain. <coughs> you have a configuration file on the Genesis where you just put the difficulty level, you need to configure, you need to configure the gas price, you need to configure various other parameters. So what is the level of difficulty your transaction is you just need to put that difficulty level value of difficulty level in the genesis file number two <coughs> is you need to put the gas price on how much you really can incentivize whenever there is any kind of transaction happen through an application through your application so wherein somebody is working for you to do it 
so which is hosted on the public blockchain so gas calculation here if you see the transactions uh, you have an execution you have a storage uh, where uh, um, and you have an amount of storage and the fee paid by the originator how much fees you need to pay for that and the type number of transactions which you need to pay so these are different opcodes opcodes is very important for a uh, gas uh, you know these are the different opcodes which you can uh, remember about and we need to we just to have a you need not mug up this just need to safeguard this and uh, just if you can go and uh, type in ops code in the google <coughs> browser you can find the same kind of things so you just need to uh, store it and see that how you really can use the ops code in the genesis file when you really configure right <coughs> fee calculations how we do the fee calculations one is gas used equal to instructions executed that is summed up gas and what is the gas price it is a user specific in the transactions and the miners decide the minimal acceptable price as I have already talked about the gas price is nothing but somebody need to accept your transaction for that you need to you need to put some price gas use this how much has been used how much gas you still have so how do you calculate this you calculate this by using this formula transaction fee equal to gas used into gas price <coughs> so what are the parameters here St start gas it's uh, measured in units maximum units of gas originator willing to spend and you have gas price it is uh, in new ethers per unit gas price that the originator will uh, likely to spend uh, for his transaction to be successful in the box <coughs> processing you have start gas and you have gas price new ethers and um, you have gas use that is how much fee has been paid so say if you want to refund that, this is a formula which you need to use, uh, which is start gas minus gas used into gas price, right? Out of gas exception, no changes made. So any kind of things, uh, say that you are out, out, out of the gas, so probably you can go and <coughs> take that to refill it. So consensus, you have different kind of consensus mechanism. This is very, very important. Please make a note of it. Validation, validate transactions secure the network <coughs> so the two types of consensus protocol uh, at least in the from the ethereum standpoint fundament nobody is using it proof of work wherein somebody need to validate your work the guy who would be validating your work is called the miner and whenever you're going to send the transaction it goes to the open pool and somebody need to pick out from the open pool and based on the gas price they will pick up if your gas price is high, they will pick up your transaction. They will solve the mathematical puzzle. They will try to put the transaction in the blockchain. <clears throat> Proof of stake, it's uh, very efficient. You don't need to have a lot of energy consumption is not there. You don't need to purchase a mining rig kind of a thing and put across, go for mining and all. <clears throat> it's all note to note communication happens. So once this, uh, any kind of transaction happens, whatever transaction which happens on the blockchain will be communicated across to all the nodes on the blockchain <clears throat> that's the reason if you see uh, if you download uh, ethereum wallet from the ethereum.org so probably it takes longer time it takes uh, today it is taking days together for you to install an ethereum wallet that's the reason i told you all uh, to use a browser based ether wallet ether etherwallet.org so where you can you we, you will have the same functionality the only thing is you cannot deploy a smart contract you can deploy a smart contract in a normal uh, wallet if you download <clears throat> but oh, it takes longer time and the moment you start opening today you have downloaded and tomorrow you come back again there are different blocks which gets already built up on top of the blockchain and those again need to be uh, downloaded again onto your system so it takes a lot of space effort time it keeps on moving keeps on downloading the blocks uh, to your local system uh, for uh, all the blocks to communicate with each other <coughs> incentivization driven model fixed rewards in tokens and transaction fees so proof of work as we discussed here you have a difficulty level you have a puzzle to solve <coughs> so uh, you have an uncomfortable uncomfortable transaction you'll have different transaction which get stored on the blockchain 
right? And this is a block which uh, which will be built across. So once the block is validated, once the transaction is validated, uh, transactions will be put on the blockchain. So Ethereum proof of work. There are two things here. One is Ghost and ETH, ETH, ETH hash. So it's a difficulty is network adjusted block created 12 seconds. Difficulty is the level where you how much time effort it take for that particular transaction to take. Block created time is around 12 seconds. Incentives I told you one a miner mines and completes one particular block he gets five ethers. But he also need for doing that. He all he spent almost two to three ethers for getting this five ethers because he's uh, spending his time, effort, uh, his electricity, his uh, equipment, and that the other things that cost a lot. So ideally, people go with uh, countries where you don't need to bother about the electricity. Like you know, if people go to Philippines, Vietnam, and other places, and uh, Korea region. So probably they are doing a lot. So now. Countries have started to do it. So Russia is also doing uh, <coughs> uh, mining to you know to safeguard uh, themselves and uh, you know North Korea. So currently with so much of sanctions which they have, then they're not getting any money. So ideally, they mostly these countries are depending on the cryptocurrencies now. So that's the reason you could see the value going high and all. So there's a lot of volatility around. So gas fee for the transaction. So Uncle Rewards, as I told you, it's 4.37 for Ethereum. The so max is two. Proof of work is environmentally unfriendly. So that means it's completely unfriendly because the amount of energy it consumes. So probably it does not make sense for us to stick to that for a longer time. <clears throat> so I think 2018 summer we will be moving into the uh, proof of stake. So Ethereum is uh, Ethereum guy Vitalik Buterin is already working on that. So I think they will be releasing it soon. <clears throat> so proof of stake, as I told you, not to validate, selected by the network. There is no competition as such. So here in a uh, in a proof of work, each of the transaction need to compete with each other because <clears throat> the guy says that I want my transaction to be put on the blockchain fast. Other guy says that I want to put. So there is uh, consistently, you know, you need to spend a lot of money to incentivize. You need to spend energy. So it's all completely uh, not scalable in the long term. Because <clears throat> say that uh, you are putting a blockchain uh, with a proof of work in a stock market, and say the number of uh, transactions which happen per second is around hundreds of transactions. Ideally, if the transaction need to wait for the miners to go and put on the blockchain, it does not make sense. It does not work out. So in that case, proof of stake should would be the better. Till that time, I think enterprise will be very cautious, uh, seeing that which protocol is being used, how the blockchain is used. So currently, all the uh, currently the ecosystem is full of POCs. The live implementation is very less, but ecosystem is getting developed. New technology is coming out, so I think if we learn, uh, keep it on uh, on top of it, right? So there is uh, several advantages of uh, we being top of the technology, right? So Ethereum proof of stake. So it uses a Casper protocol, so you can make a note of it. Proof of work. <coughs> you have ETH hash and Ghost. Here you have Casper. It reduces the energy consumption. You don't need to consume electricity, and it a lower incentive or needed for motivation. You don't need to have any kind of incentive. But however, people still say that node also needs some kind of incentivizing. So they don't give that much of what they give and put a gas price. So it's very smaller amount. <coughs> Stake in the network will promote good behavior. So. Overall, node-to-node -node communication, it's seamless, quite seamless. You don't need to be, uh, be, uh, depend on the human to do your work. So uh, machines are much more intelligent if we uh, streamline that in a better way. So probably it will take care of itself, right? So that's what we need to make things more efficient and leave it. Things will start working out. Stake, the network will promote good behavior and punishment as part of the protocol will act as a deterrent. So you always that somebody has put a 
false transaction so probably that guy will be completely blocked you will not have other transaction coming through that guy so that kind of uh, punishment system is getting you know build up across in the proof of stake so but how are not all the blockchain is using uh, this concepts but how <clears throat> if you have time go and uh, check hashgraph blockchain very wonderful blockchain it's going to be uh, excellent better than ethereum i can say so they have still not completely launched but how it works on a gossip protocol so very interesting thing so there are a lot of other uh, useful material which has been posted across online so probably you can watch across different blockchain platforms so this over the period of time you uh, your learning curve will be takes around 4 uh, to 6 months time for you to completely adopt and understand blockchain <clears throat> ethereum network you have a live network um, and with a network id of 1 and under the test network on the ethereum network you have a test net so there are three kinds of test network so i think before you go to the live network so you just need to launch your product on the test net test net also you have three kinds of test net one is a, a coven test network one is a ring b and uh, Coven and Ringby. Coven Ringby has an ID of four, and a network uh, and a Robston and Robston network is Robston and Ringby are more popular. Uh, when you try to test your blockchain before it goes onto the live network, you need to use the Robston network, which is recommended. Or uh, you can go with Coven or Ringby. But however, Robston and Ringby are uh, much more used. And private network network ID, you need to assign your own network ID. So as i told you a private network is where it's like a private cloud you create for yourself instead of going and uh, you know <coughs> going for a third party cloud provider you go and create your own cloud uh, service within your organization so you don't want to explore expose your uh, critical applications to the uh, large public right so it's the same concept here applies in blockchain as well so keeping in view different uh, use cases and different uh, people who would be using the platform <clears throat> we can go and create a private network and we can say that data will be within ourselves right it's completely closed so private network so it's as a distributed database it's a consortium you have industry verticals you have permission blockchain you have internal transactions and contracts So all this is part of the private network. <clears throat> so ether supply. So you, uh, as I told you, uh, there are three kinds of network: live, test net, and private network. You have block explorer. Uh, you can just type block explorer dot info, where it helps you to track a real time blockchain platform, where you can see what is the kind of transaction which is happening now, and who is sending where. how many coins has been sent across where exactly is sending it across everything can be tracked in block explorer you just can google it type block explorer you'll find the block explorer dot info is one of the url where you can make a note of you can just uh, look into that uh, every transaction history will be a uh, visible there right so through this network what you can build you can build your distributed applications on top of it for any vertical you can build a distributed application <clears throat> so ethereum concept one is wallet one is explorer account types what are those let's look into it wallet architecture it's like as i told you you just can go to etherwallet.org or you wherein you can just uh, have a browser based wallet or you can go to ethereum.org and you can download uh, the binaries by looking into which uh, what what is the kind of operating system you have whether you have a 64 bit or a 32 bit so based on that you can select the file and you can download a wallet on your uh, system but how it takes longer time please be patient <clears throat> because as the complete blockchain need to be downloaded on your system it takes uh, a few hours to a few days based on your system performance your capacity of your hard disk all this uh, your internet speed uh, the number of blocks which gets generated all this uh, counts a lot 
So if you you have uh, different uh, links, you just can go with the blockchain explorer. You have etherscan.io. You have etherchain.org. You uh, if you want to monitor the test net, uh, you can go to etherscan.io, right? And if you want to go for a live one, live.ether.scan. So all this, you just can make a note of it. You just can browse and look into it. Uh, when you get time, so I think you will have understanding. Will move on as you move, right? <clears throat> so, what are the type of accounts? What do you? What is the type of account, right? So, any kind of contract. Uh, so, you you need to have a signature for that particular contract. So, there is a guy say that I'm the only person, and I just need to sign it myself. That is a single user contract. Any kind of multiple use parties involved. That is a multi-sig contract. So these are the two types of contract. One is externally owned account, which has an address and a private key protected by a password. One is a contract account. Contract account has an address, but it does not have any private key. Okay, and uh, it holds the run code. So whatever code you have, it runs that, and associated it is associated with the accounts, and it's not free to use. What is a contract account? You have two different kinds. One is a single user and multi-sig, as I already told you. So one account creates multiple owners. That means there will be one account, but there will be multiple owners. There will be one smart contract, and there will be multiple people who would be accountable for that smart contract function. Well, number of owners m equal to required to confirm the number of transactions here. And if you come back to a single owner, it's an accounts can't display incoming transactions. You have to create a simple contract to see what are the kind of incoming transactions you have. So they say that uh, this is a multi-sig contract where you have two different uh, guys here. One is Bob and Elias. So they just want to see uh, there is a smart contract which got executed here. So it's a multi-sig contract. Here it's a uh, contract gets created here. So once the contract gets imported, so this guy is sending out two ethers. And she is also sending out two ethers, but however, he is he is supposed to send only two ethers. He is sending out. He is requesting a three ethers from this particular account, which is a multi-sig contract. That means it's a joint account, which is owned by these two people. And any day, each of them need to spend only two ethereums, right? But however, Bob, what he is doing. He is sending out a requesting three ethers. Now there should be a message which gets passed on. The allies say that okay, yeah, so you know <clears throat> she needs to approve. Okay, once it approves, Bob can take three ethers. Otherwise, he will not be able to take it. Uh, the transaction will be declined. So that is a use of a multi-sig contract, which can be used across in multiple use cases. So if you look into the working uh, working working architecture, you have web app. Uh, you have a distributed applications here. You have front-end applications. Any kind of uh, front-end you can take to build it. A back-end will be like you build on Solidity and Goeth. Uh, and a front-end can be any kind of interface which you can go with a, uh, with uh, your own uh, native uh, language uh, for a front-end. Uh, and then uh, central resources, you have a mid-tire. You can use a cloud service or a, your own infrastructure if you have. So there is a data here, and you have a block data, decentralized resource, so public domain at the bottom. So working of distributed applications, you have a you have an app user pays uh, some gas fees. He invokes the contract, and he manages the fund, and uh, then the miner collects and validates the transaction, and he puts the transaction on the blockchain. This again another use case where how we use this particular distributed application bidding. It's it's a bidding kind of a thing where, say, a guy want to ship the product from one location to other, and how exactly he does the with the withdrawal function, right? So ship the goods. Uh, he's a seller here. Here he's a buyer, and uh, so he's bidding for it. Multiple people will bid for it. So bidding it's one of the good use case for the. A blockchain because uh, there is so much of trust and transparency which we can create when multiple people are bidding uh, on the same platform, right? So it creates a good uh, transparency in the setup. 
<coughs> metamask i think metamask is a distributed browser based uh, wallet again it's very easy to use uh, it will be uh, coming as a plugin uh, on the google chrome right it's the architecture of the metamask you have a local node or simulator you have a metamask wallet here and you have the complete node which gets communicated with uh, the main blockchain <coughs> right this is how the overall account looks so i can just demonstrate a quick uh, uh, practical of a metamask on how to uh, go for it right so again a remix browser it's a browser based solidity program you need not go with a complete tool you just check and type in remix you have a it's a browser based one and it can be seamlessly executed very easy to use so you just can go to this link ethereum.github.io browser solidity you can go and access that and it helps to code the smart contract in a browser and it tests the contractor in a simulator and it deploys the contract to the live network or whether you want to go for a live network or a test network like a coven or ring b or a uh, you know uh, so you can do that all right this is about the uh, uh, metamask how exactly it functions there is some kind of functionality which has been written in remix uh, for the communication to happen with the metamask this is an online wallet it's a decentralized app again like you know it's a bitcoin blockchain wallet it's a blockchain wallet so people can send and receive bitcoins through here from here right so there are other features which you can explore <coughs> and um, you have this uh, available on wallet.ethereum.org if you go with so you will find uh, this information where you can download and explore yourself see how it works so what is the difference between a local and online wallet as i discussed about you know a local wallet is something where you need to completely download and it need to completely sync with the live blockchain network right so whenever you open say today you close down your computer and tomorrow you come back again there will be new blocks which get mined and that need to be downloaded onto your system so an online wallet so it takes care by itself right it is uh, you need not you can consume your hard disk space you need not uh, install it but our security standpoint it is a bit risky because uh, it is not in your complete control right so this is about it i just want to walk through a few links where you know uh, you have my ether wallet okay so this is the link my ether wallet you can go and you can create a new wallet so once you go here you just can select what language you want right <clears throat> and this is the unit of measurement you just can select how much gui or gui is the unit of measurement for uh, the gas price right you just can select this you can just select which network it is on one is rockstone or coven or ringbay right and just you can create a password you just need to if you not be forgetting the password it's not like your email password where you forget it and somebody is going to recover it once you lost it's lost so that is the drawback of a cryptocurrency right so you should be always be cautious about your private key and your passwords and you also need to enable two factor authentication for things to be much more secure great in addition to that you just can go and say how we work on metamask you just can go to metamask here you can find metamask.io you know, it it does not take much time for you to install it's easy to use say i go and say add to chrome Okay, you got it here. So see here, uh, your MetaMask is there here. So how it works? You just can check this video. MetaMask.io is where you can go and check. So I click on this, and now I need to accept the agreement. I just scroll this and accept the agreement, and I'll just type in. the password right the password is created you need to copy the and copy paste to this particular thing uh, if you want to recover at the later point of time it's very important to make a note of it say i have copied it somewhere now it is done your account is set 
so you don't have any ethers so for doing a, say that which network you are in you are here on the main test network say so you are on the main network here so here you have robsten test net you have coven so i'll select robsten here so now i'm moving to a robsten network from a main network so i don't have any ethers here so just to test on the robsten network you just can go and buy some ethers it is not on the live network but however you can buy some faucets so say i click on robsten test faucet so it goes to the faucet here so faucet faucet is nothing but a free ether it's a community where people will give you free ethers which does not have any value right so i say <clears throat> request one ether okay let us wait now there will be one ether which will be coming up here so see here so you already got one ether here so now this has 10 ethers right see this is the 10 ethers so what is this out of this 10 ethers you did not get all 10 ethers and you got only some because the rest of the things has been taken by the gas price so for this transaction to happen there is some gas price which which need to be there right so uh like to we need to be taken for this transaction to happen in this way you can create multiple accounts on the same platform and uh, say one you can keep it confidential within yourself one you can give it to your uh, friends right so this is the private key so say this is the public key where you can copy it and you can give this address so that somebody want to transfer any uh, amount uh, of uh, Uh, ethers to the address they can do this uh, to this address so once it happens it comes here right so i think this is about it for today so i think as we move on now uh, we'll have some other sessions which should be coming in keep watching out uh, tech gig uh, so we will have other sessions in different areas of you know hyperledger solidity and other things will be covered as we move on right